Ooh, Tim Dog in the house, actually in the office. Um, I want to make a quick vid today to talk about just terminology and, you know, there's so many buzzwords and so much like crazy lingo in this law of assumption, law of attraction space, you know, create your own reality. Everyone is you pushed out that it's very easy to get confused. I want to make a, a video today helping you perhaps use lingo that feels better for you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tim Grimes, Papa Bear Tim, author of several best-selling stress management books that relate to the law of assumption and law of attraction, maker or host of uh, Law of Attraction Explored, podcast that explores these LOA concepts like none other, and uh, a guy who's usually on, in the car when it comes to YouTube videos and breaks down shit in a way that pretty much no one else on YouTube does when it comes to these manifesting concepts. As I like to say, we start where other people end. So welcome, whether you're new here or old here. We're gonna dive right into it. Um, yeah, if you feel like you need help or support, I still am offering free, short consultations. No pressure, no BS. If you would like some help and you know, Zoom directly with me, uh, you can contact me via my website and we can set that up for you. But today I want to discuss um, language, right? You know, like create your own reality, right? People use that term. It's a great term when, you know, it was probably first said. Likewise, something like everyone is you pushed out. And so many of these other catchphrases that sound really cool when you first hear them. Uh, but the issue is pretty soon they become stale and they become these dogmatic phrases that actually mean next to nothing. If you're doing real inner work on yourself, if you're really looking at your uh, inner emotional landscape and navigating that and moving through emotions that at first you definitely are going to see as negative and perhaps get to know these feelings better. Um, the dogmatism and the phrases, as great as they are, end up not helping us as, as we would think. And one phrase that always stuck with me in an odd way, and I've spoken about this, is from my, my favorite manifesting teacher, Emil Kuwait. You know, Kuwait would often say that you can become master of yourself. You know, master of your imagination. And first of all, when I heard that, it seems so completely unrealistic and outlandish a thing to say. And this is coming from someone who's very grounded in, in Kuwait, it was very grounded compared to most of these manifesting teachers, but it still seems so outlandish of a thing to say. And it also just seemed kind of like too overly domineering. And Kuwait wasn't like a domineering guy. He was a benevolent person, really, honestly like a christ-like person compared to you know most people you'd meet including most of these law of attraction type of teachers so he he i knew why i never the phrase you know always stuck with me it was didn't really like it but at the same time i knew it was true in a way that was significant um was that here was this great teacher who helped Thousands and thousands and thousands of people heal themselves and improve their lives. And again, if you don't know Emil Kuei, I mean this literally. This is not some law of assumption, law of attraction, sensationalism. Kuei was a lot more effector, effective of, as a teacher of these principles, of these ideas, than all these other folks we hear about who are more popular. Neville, Abraham Hicks, etc. Kuei is a far better teacher when it comes to actually practically getting people to improve their lives. And he said something as outlandish as you can become master of yourself, master of your imagination. So really it's a phrase that I've grappled with for years um, and I'm still grappling with. Uh, but you know, another 
way he said it that really has been resonating with me recently and I think might resonate with a lot of you watching this video more than master of yourself. And see, he would say like, you know, you direct your imagination. You direct your imagination. You're the director of your imagination, of your thoughts and feelings. You're the director of that. And especially recently, that phrase has really resonated with me. And I think there's several reasons why. One reason is, you know, I, growing up, I was, since I was young, I was really into movies and the theater. And, you know, I went to Emerson for visual and media arts. So I was always into, you know, and want to like direct things, right? When I was like in college, I think my professional dream was to be like a film director. And when like you're a director, whether it's, you know, the stage or film, whatever, a creative director, and like you're working with actors, you are not the master of the actor. You're working with the actor so they can play their part well and represent the uh, production, what you want, the vision you have well. So you're not trying, it's not a position of like, you know, master and servant. And Kuwait said this too. This isn't like a position where like, you know, it's master and servant. It's like it, they're, they're friendly with each other, right? And they're working together. They're collaborating. And so that, that film or theater analogy of like direction, you know, being a film director, theater director, uh, resonates with like, you know, director of your imagination. And of course, you know, Neville has that story where he talks about, uh, you know, the different roles and like the role of the producer and all this stuff, right? But that's an aside here. The other reason I think that this director, this idea of directing your imagination as opposed to mastering something, directing it, really has hit home for me recently is, you know, as I continue to do uh, more internal family systems work, IFS for short. IFS work as, you know, uh, basically created by Richard Schwartz, Dick Schwartz. The more IFS work I do on myself and with clients, the more I see this relationship with our so-called parts, right, that Dick Schwartz always talks about, which are, you know, basically these emotions or aspects of ourselves that we have often suppressed or repressed because we don't want to deal with them, right? Things like our fear or our, our guilt or our shame. Often these feelings or aspects of ourselves that have been there since we were kids and that there's a lot of trauma in, in, revolved around, around the aspect, right? traumatic stuff that has been here since childhood. Through IFS, I think I've learned how to better work with these parts and see them as successful actors in my life. That's the other analogy or metaphor I will use here. Is that, you know, utilizing something like IFS as like a modality where you also are utilizing imaginative stuff that the way to Kuwe or Neville talks about, LOA stuff, right? Has made me see that, you know, Big Tim, right? The director is working with these parts, these aspects of myself to live a more fulfilling life. And you work with these parts, with these actors imaginatively so you're directing them you're directing them so the vision is complete for you so you have a more healthy rewarding fulfilling loving compassionate lifestyle these parts are the imaginative actors that you are directing and these parts that often at first we are scared to work with they're like bad actors, right? And we, oh, we, you know, we can never work with this actor. They would never be right for the production. 
my anger or my guilt would never, never work in my life. There's no way that this, this anger has a, has a productive place in my vision of myself. Well, a good director starts to look at these parts, these feelings, these aspects, and realizes, oh, the anger, the shame, the tightness in the chest, the tightness in the throat, the throbbing head, they are there for a reason. And these aspects of ourselves, if we start working with them, directing them, communicating with them, you know, because when you work with actors and actresses, usually you're communicating with them. And by communicating with them, you direct them. It's a holistic process where both the actor and the director feel fulfilled more and more. And the role gets played more and more fulfillingly, not just for the director, but also for the actor. The vision is made whole. I think you follow my lines of thinking with this. It might not be the perfect analogy, but seeing you know, your, yourself as a director of your imagination as opposed to a master in the same way that like you can't be master over your emotions and whip them and put them in the corner and expect that to be a sustainable thing that's going to make you feel good long term. But instead being, you know, the, the person, the director who is able to work with the emotions, with these parts and have them act well and act well together together because often you know when we have issues in our lives and we have stress and resistance in our lives it's because one part one actor is not getting along with the other actor they're not playing their roles well becoming a better and better director allows these parts to you as the director will make it so each person is playing their role better playing their role well and the roles complement each other to create a unique fulfilling whole so just something that's been on my mind, very, very helpful for me. And I think for probably some of you watching this video. Uh, again, yeah, we've spoken a lot about this. Uh, if you want personal attention from me, if you would like coaching, um, I offer free initial consultations to see if I can be a help. And I can be reached at radicalcounselor.com.